Previously, Donna went back in time to 2010 to make challenge videos before they happened. She became super famous, but eventually burnt out. In order to prevent burnout, she kept going back in time to do different things, but the same result always happened. Burnout. Why can't Donna just be happy? I burned out. Welcome to Psych IRL, my name is Donna. Yes, I burned out. Not just 2010 celebrity YouTuber Donna in this alternate timeline, but this Donna. Last year in 2019, I burnt out. But don't worry, I overcame it. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to make this video because burnout just doesn't apply to YouTubers, but it extends to a number of professions. Actually, it's more researched in healthcare, even activism, and teaching. So even though I'm going to be talking about this in the perspective of a YouTuber, hopefully you can take something from this and apply it to your own life. So a lot of what I'm going to be talking about is going to be based on Christina Maslach's research, which I went into depth in last week's video. So you can go watch that if you want. According to her research, I was hitting all the signs of what burnout looked like. I was exhausted, very, very exhausted because I was saying yes to too many collaborations and I was saying yes to too many brand deals. On top of all of that, I felt like I had to meet this level of quality just so my viewers could be happy. And yes, it's a self-induced thing, but also there was also a minority of viewers that really came and subscribed for that quality, and I don't blame them. But that really added to the workload, and when you take on a workload you can't handle, that's one of the main predictors of burnout, and that's what happened to me. I was extremely tired all the time. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll see me editing till 5 a.m. in the morning just to publish a video. It's almost 6 a.m. and I'm still editing this video. Pulling all-nighters twice a week can't be good for you. And it led to the second characteristic of burnout, which is cynicism. Yep, <laughs> this tired, exhausted Donna turned into a cynic. I was cynical of other creators on the platform and I was very cynical of the algorithm. Yes, it helped me to grow, but also I had this mindset of, wow, this system that did help me to grow also doesn't facilitate quality content and this sucks. I'm so tired. And that negative attitude towards the platform and towards other creators and paired up with that tiredness led to the third characteristic of burnout, which is inefficacy. And inefficacy means um, the failure to produce your desired result. And in this case, that's videos. Like if you look at my videos, I produced less videos than I did in 2019 than I did ever. And that sucks. Some of you could tell, some of you couldn't. I was just very ineffective at my work. And it was this ongoing cycle. Because I was tired, I was ineffective. Because my attitude was very cynical about the platform, I was ineffective. And again, it kept going on and on and on. Back in 2019, when all these big YouTubers uh, shared their story of burnout, it actually kind of annoyed me because it was relatable, but it was also unrelatable. And what I mean by that uh, is that it's relatable in that I know they're not lying about their feelings. It's a feeling that they're very honest with because I felt burnt out before at school in past jobs, so I know they weren't lying about their feelings. But also, it was very unrelatable in terms of YouTube because I felt like they were these big creators. Now, hold on, this is coming from very cynical Donna, by the way, so I don't really feel like this anymore. So keep that in mind that this is from the perspective of cynical Donna. They were these top tier YouTubers, and I felt like if they wanted to take a break like they expressed so often in their videos, they could. They had the financial means to do so. They also could possibly have teams, so even if they wanted to take a break, they didn't have to stop that workflow. And if for some reason their channel would become irrelevant because they did that, I felt like a lot of them had connections to hit up their friends and be like, hey, uh, Shane Dawson, could you uh, do a little collaboration with me because my channel is getting not enough views. And that attitude wasn't coming from a place of, this is so unfair, why aren't I as big as them? It was coming more from a place of, should I really be listening to this advice? They're so up there that this advice 
isn't going to help me. A lot of the solutions they were offering were things like scheduling. You should schedule your workflow. I did have a schedule. You know, obviously sometimes things would get pushed back because brands wanted me to revise certain things or something logistical would pop up like the sound not syncing or something like that. But I did my best to stick within that schedule. And more solutions they'd offer are things like breathing, gratitude, meditation. Bitch, I know how to breathe. Not gonna lie, that meditation stuff really did help for the short term, but that's it. I felt like I was putting a band-aid on an underlying problem and I needed to address that underlying problem. I just didn't know what it was. Like I took breaks for weeks sometimes, not thinking about YouTube or working um, on YouTube related things. But then after that break, I'd come back pull my laptop up and I'd stare at this blank page, just staring at it, not being able to write anything. And it didn't come from a place of, oh, I'm not inspired, or it didn't come from a place of, I didn't have ideas because I had a multitude of ideas. Nothing would just come out. And I know that sounds weird and hard to understand, but I think the best way to explain it is the iPhone. Apple has to produce the same type of iPhone because it's in demand and consumers want it. And I could do that. I could produce the same type of video over and over again. But also on the other side, they have to redesign the iPhone and make it better. They have to evolve with the technology so they remain competitive against other competitors. And that was my favorite part. And that's what I couldn't figure out to do with my channel. How do I evolve my channel further? How do I take this to the next level? I didn't know how to do that anymore. And I thought, all right, maybe, maybe like school and my other jobs, maybe I've just grown out of YouTube because this making videos just doesn't make me happy anymore. It wasn't until I looked and researched what burnout was that I realized what was the problem. And it was sort of a relief because when I looked at Maslach's research, it meant that it was possible for me to overcome this. What the problem was, was um, I was watching these YouTubers videos and I was associating burning out to mostly just workload because that's what mostly these big YouTubers talked about. It's that heavy workload. And yes, that is a predictor of burnout. And that was also part of my problem, but it wasn't the main problem. And a lot of the times they would also talk about rewards, which again, being a small to mid-tiered creator, I didn't really get that many rewards. Like, sure, I'd hit a viral video now and then, but it wasn't a constant thing. And minimal views were something I was used to. So I, I never got rewards. I never felt what it's like to earn such a high income and have uh, Adpocalypse just take that all away. So yeah, I, I never knew the rewards that these YouTubers were talking about. And that's why it was so unrelatable to me as well. Burnout isn't just uh, workload and it isn't just rewards, but it's also values. And that's where it really hit me. Values address your why. Why you wanted to do that job in the first place. Why I started YouTube was because it was fun. I think a lot of people expect this inspirational, enlightening, sometimes sob story of, oh, YouTube helps me uh, cope with my sadness, but no, it's simple. It's fun. Like some kids just like to draw and it's fun. And that's why I started YouTube, but somewhere along that way, that value, that motivation changed that value of it being fun changed into, I need to prove to other people that I can succeed at this. So if you actually go back to my old videos, you'll see this where I used to work at a short term vacation rental company. And this woman writes me this nasty email of how much she didn't like the videos I make. Long story short, I wasn't even supposed to be making videos um, for her. That wasn't my job, but for some reason she had the need to tell my coworker and boss that. And that's only one example of the external criticism I was getting, but that was kind of an example of, oh, I, I need to prove to these people that I can do this. And eventually that kind of happened. When you grow in subscribers and view counts, I'm not saying that numbers are a quantification of the value of your work, 
but it does help that external validation just a little bit. Not only that, but big successful YouTubers in the industry were following me on Twitter. They were sending me private DMs that were like, hey, this is good work. Great job, I love your videos. Stuff like that. Brands were sponsoring me. I was nominated for a Shorty Award, that's crazy. Sure, I'm the least subscribed person on this list, but I, it's still cool to be nominated. And so I was getting a lot of external validation now. And I kind of proved to myself that I could do it. And now it sounds like I'm being very ungrateful, but I'm not. I'm really thankful. I'm really grateful for this. And I don't think any amount of words I can say can ever show that. The point I'm trying to make is that burnout is more than just like having too much work or l less rewards. It's also that value. So if you look deeper into my situation, if you look deeper, you'll see what happened. You'll see why that motivation just stopped. So my motivation was trying to prove to people that I could do this. And then I did. I didn't get a million subscribers, but I actually kind of did. And for some reason, I didn't know at that time. I didn't know why making videos, continuing to make videos just sucked. But I still continued to begrudgingly do it. And I didn't, I couldn't place my feeling of why I was feeling this way. Again, I just thought that I've grown out of but it. But then I made a video about Trisha Paytas where I played a uh, director of The Truman Show. And I felt that same feeling of fun. And it was so weird. It was like a aha moment of, oh, oh yeah, I remember why I started YouTube in the first place. And that's how I sort of overcame burnout. Now with other content, I try to add that element. I try to add an element of narrative um, to my newer videos. and it's enjoyable for me. I'm renewed and motivated once again. And here's the thing. I know fun things don't last. Fun things don't always remain fun and burnout is going to happen again. And for some people that's really disheartening, but also for me, it's like a beautiful thing almost. Burnout is this feeling that makes us human. If we never burnt out, I think um, as a species it sounds so stupid but as a species again we'd stay stagnant because we'd always be content with a certain level of of thing what if we were content with the horse-drawn carriage we'd never have the tesla we'd never have the cyber truck come on so to me i see burnout now as this thing that tells you that you need to evolve whatever you're doing and not just for the good of yourself but eventually it does lead to the good of your environment. And when that feeling comes again, I now know what to look at and what to change. Lastly, I just wanna thank you guys for always sticking around and not leaving. I know 2019 was the year of my trash content and my um, sporadic upload schedule, but I really want to show my gratitude to you guys um, for always being here. I'm not, I, look, like, you know this, I'm not a cheesy person, I don't know how to, I'm uncomfortable now, but <laughs> that's the end of my video, I will see you guys next time, stay psyched. Maybe it is just, look, hold this. Why? Whoa! I'm you from the, the future, actually a different timeline, you can't go back to 2010 to do those challenge videos. This bitch crazy. I'm just gonna listen to her. Apparently, I am. Oh, I don't feel so good.